Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and today I'm going to be showing you how to create a searchable table using HTML, CSS and JavaScript, okay? So, this right here is going to be the finished product as we can see, fairly simple HTML table but I can actually search it using the table headers. For example, if I type in FRA inside the country column, we only get back uh, the rows which have the keywords of FRA inside the country value, okay? So, for example, France. So, this is going to be purely client side, so there's going to be no server side searching. If you do want to see me do a video on server side searching on a table like this, please let me know and I'll try my best to create that video. So, going inside this tab right here, we're going to be starting from essentially this table. So, it contains the exact same data as we just saw and it's also already got CSS applied to it. I thought there was no point going through the CSS in today's video because it's not too relevant, but if you do want to download and copy the CSS, I'm going to leave it below as well as the rest of this code that is covered in today's video. So, with that being said, we're going to be converting these table headers right here into input fields for us to, of course, begin work on making these things searchable. So, going inside the HTML, we can see we've got this right here. It's a fairly simple HTML table with a class of table and there isn't too much going on. We've got the table head containing our, of course, header rows right here or header columns right here. And then each one of our individual data rows, which are obviously contained within the T body right here. So the first step is going to be to convert these into their own input fields. So I'll just go here and I'll say input with a type of text and give this a class of search dash input as well as a placeholder of the actual previous title. For example, we can say full name right here. I'm going to save this and just copy and paste uh, the rest of them uh, for the remaining three. So I'll copy this and just paste it here and we have the exact same thing for our remaining table headers right there. So now saving this and going back in the browser we can see we get something like this. So uh, there's already been some CSS applied to these uh, input fields. So I'll show you that right now. If I go back to the CSS, we can see uh, the class of search input has a font size, padding, border, um, and a font family. So like I said earlier, you can easily just download this code to achieve the same effect. All right, so now we've got these input fields set up. Let's now move on to the main part, of course, the JavaScript, all right? so. The first step inside here is going to be to say document.addEventListener and we're going to say DOM contents loaded. Then we're going to say inside here. So basically this just means whenever the document is ready to be worked on by the JavaScript, um, it's going to run this function and we are basically good to go. Uh, sometimes if you don't do this, then you're going to get errors uh, when it comes to, you know, for example, can't call method something on undefined or null. So this is kind of optional, but I recommend you do it. Um, the next thing though is going to be, of course, more important, and that is going to be to essentially um, select each one of our input fields right here. So each one of these four input fields, and we're going to run a function on that. Okay, so going inside here, we're going to say document.querySelectorAll and we're going to be selecting every single input field with a class of search-input just like this. Then we're going to say dot for each and then we're going to say right here input field and this just means look we're going to run this function inside here for each one of our four uh, you know input fields in our table headers right here. So with each one of our four input fields, okay, we need to gather some data before we get to the searching part, all right? So, we need to first essentially gather each one of our individual table data rows that are contained within the table body. So, to achieve that, I'm going to go inside here and we're going to say const table rows is equal to uh, input field dot closest going to pass through here closest table. So basically what this closest table does is you're going to begin at your input field right here. Then we're going to say get me the closest table. So I'm going to go up the tree here until we find the closest table. So of course in this case it's going to refer to our main table here on line 11. Then I'm going to get the table 
and we're going to say dot query selector all. We're going to say T body, then TR. So now we're basically just saying, you know what, let's start at this table. We're going to select down and, uh, and um, just select every single TR that is within our T body. So now this table rows is a list of each one of our individual table, uh, you know, table rows containing our data. All right, so there's actually 15 of these rows right here, as we saw in this example, all the way down here. So back inside here, the next step is going to be to essentially determine which index we need to search in. So if, for example, you're searching by the country, uh, the index of this you know, cell or this uh, table header is actually two. So it goes zero for the full name, okay? one for occupation, two for country, and then three for favorite movie. So we need to basically start at this country input field, for example, and get ourselves the value of two. That way, we know to search in this column right here, the France, Russia, China, etc., in this third column in the actual data. So back inside here, we're going to first get a reference to the actual table header cell. So we're going to say header cell right here, equal to input field dot closest, then pass through here th. So once again, uh, this is just saying, you know what, we're going to start at the input field, for example, occupation, going to get the closest th, giving us this one right here on line 17. Alternatively, you can even say, you know, dot parent element. In this case here, it's going to give you the same result, but if you had, you know, nesting here, for example, if you had your input field inside a div, in this case, the parent element won't work. We should instead use the closest th. That is your best, uh, you know, um, your best option. Okay, so let's just put this back to the way it was. There we go. So we've got our header cell. The next step is to get every other header cell. So we're going to say const other header cells is equal to input field dot closest tr then dot children all right so this right here is just saying get me um, my closest tr this one right here then get me its children so alternatively you could even say you know dot query selector all and to be honest it's probably better to say this it's probably a little bit more clearer okay so we're just saying right here get me every single table header that is, of course, the child of this TR right here. So basically, this header cell is going to be one of the four inside this other header cells. Okay, so if I console.log um, our table rows, our header cell, and our other header cells, we should get a good result. I'll just save this, go back in the browser, go in the console, and we can see right here for each one of our four input fields, we've got the list of all our data rows, okay? We've got the actual table header element, and we've got the other table header elements. As we can see, this first one here for full name is of course at index zero inside this list of table header elements. So we can see where this is going. We're gonna simply find out which one of these indexes our table header is for, all right? So back inside here, the next step is going to be to actually retrieve that index. Okay, so we're going to say const column index is equal to, then we're going to say array dot from and pass through here other header cells. So like we just saw, the list of the header cells here is a node list. So this right here does not have the useful index of method, which we're going to be using. So we're going to convert it to an array using array dot from. Then we're going to say dot index of, then pass through here the actual header cell. So now if I console log the column index, save this, as we can see, we get 0, 1, 2, 3 for each one of our four input fields. So we're good to go uh, from that perspective. All right. Um, so next step is going to be to actually find out, okay, you know, we've got all of these 15 table rows. Now, which one of our columns are going to be searchable, um, you know, via this input field. So uh, let's make a new constant here called searchable cells. So this will contain the actual, you know, TD, you know, table data uh, elements that can be searched. 
So back in here, we're going to say equals array dot from once again this time on the table rows that way we can use the dot map method and dot map is going to allow us to basically convert our table row so our tr elements right here um, into one of these four tds so back up here i'm going to say dot map i'm going to grab the row and then we're just going to say uh, row dot query selector all okay going to pass through here td then using the uh, the square brackets we're going to pass through column index so basically it's just saying look once you've got your table row right here okay it's going to select each one of our four tds then it's going to grab the one with the index which we discovered just up here so now if i console log the searchable cells save this go back in the browser we can see we get 15 for each one uh, for example, the uh, second index, the country, we can see we get each TD just for the country right there. So now we know, okay, these are the TD uh, elements to actually search in. So back inside here, we can finally move on to the main part of this whole function that is going to be to get the search working. So for this, we're going to say input field dot add event listener. We're going to listen for the input event. So basically, whenever the user types a key into those uh, input fields, it's going to run this function. So the function is going to firstly just gather the search query. So we're going to say const search query is equal to input field dot value. OK, dot to lowercase. So the reason for the two lowercase here is so that, you know, uh, we can actually, you know, if I go back to my example, um, if I was to type in FRA here, as we can see, this is a lowercase FRA, uh, but France still appears even though it has the uppercase F. So if we didn't do our two lowercase, um, we would not achieve case insensitive searching. So that's why we need to use that two lowercase there to ensure that we can search regardless of the casing. All right. So down here, we can now say uh, for const table cell of our searchable cells. So basically, for each one of our searchable table cells, we're going to firstly just get its parent row. So we're going to say const row is equal to table cell, uh, just like this, table cell dot closest tr. So once again, like the previous example, we can probably just use the parent element property here instead of calling this method, but this makes it a little bit more clearer as to what's going on. All right. So we're going to start at our TD here and then go up and get our closest TR. The reason for this is because we're going to be changing the CSS visibility property on our rows for the ones that don't match our search criteria. So that is why we need our table row. The next step is going to be to actually retrieve the value, which is going to be, you know, compared against with our search query. So for this, we're going to say table cell dot text content. Okay. Uh, once again, using dot to lowercase to achieve our case insensitive searching. Then we're going to say dot replace, then pass through here a comma and then replace it with nothing. So basically, if you have data cells that contain commas for money and things like that, it's going to pretend as if those money, you know, uh, commas don't exist. So for example, if a value was, you know, one, one, two, three, one like this, right? Um, this will actually be seen as being one, two, three, one. That way, if you search one, two, three in your, you know, header, uh, this will still come up. All right. So that being said, we've got our row and our value. So now it's going to be quite straightforward. The first step now is going to be to just say row dot style dot visibility is equal to null. So we are just resetting the visibility of our row. So basically this right here is going to make every single row. Um, available to be viewed, um, you know, even even before the search has started. All right, so that ensures that every row has a chance of actually appearing, um, you know, inside our search. Okay, so now the last step is going to be to say if our value dot search right here. This is using the search method of our you know string. Going to pass through here the search query. So now. We're going to say is equal to negative one. So this right here is just checking, you know what? It's checking, you know, is our table cell value, for example, 
is France, you know, uh, you know, is our search query part of our France value? Okay, if it is, this is not going to return a negative one. It's going to return negative one if it does not exist. So in those cases, we need to hide the row. So we're going to say row dot style dot visibility is equal to collapse. So what what the collapse uh, value does for the CSS property here is going to be to basically just hide the table row as if it was never there. So now we are basically done with this. If I save this and go back in the browser and see here, if I type in, for example, assistant, we can see only those, you know, table rows with the assistant in those uh, columns are going to show up. So there you go. That is how to create a searchable table using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. If this video helped you out, leave a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.